In this video we're going to look at different types of keyframes. And remember a keyframe is just a way of marking the differences in parameters at a certain moment in time. So let's get started. File and then import and I selected the files to bring them in this way. Actually I chose, chose uh, multiple files and then I selected the folder. So now I've got a folder in here and, and I can uh, keep my stuff organized. So uh, the four different types of keyframes we're going to look at here, one of them is the uh, linear. Let's start with the linear, which is this guy right here. And notice that this looks like a diamond. And uh, this would mark uh, one parameter, and then you could have another one. So in other words, you could have uh, an object sitting on the x value of 0, and then over here, their, their x value of 10. So then they move from this point to that point in just a linear fashion, just, just pretty much straight across not speeding up or slowing down or anything like that. And then the uh, Bezier keyframe, which looks like this, it's inverted, and if you have, you could actually have a half Bezier on one side and um, not on the other, but the Bezier offers a little bit more uh, fluidity. We'll take a look at that when we start to look at the graph. And then um, there are uh, toggle stop frames. This is what a toggle stop frame looks like. And it would stop whatever the parameters are at this moment and then it would keep them frozen on hold until the next keyframe. And then there are rover frames. And these are rover frames right here. Just to give you an overview on these. If we have uh, something that's moving from point A to point B and, and a couple of points in between, uh, when we drag out the end, what this will do is these will spread out accordingly. And uh, that way you can stretch the animation and, and these guys will all move together. Whereas if you work with, say, the linear one, uh, you're not going to be able to do that. You actually click these individually and move these individually. Okay, so let's get started. We'll just go ahead and make a new composition. Composition, new composition. I'll just take my default there and we'll get started. Uh, we'll work with animating the letter B, one of my most favorite letters, the letter B. I'll make it a little larger. So I just uh, selected the text tool, went ahead and put it on the composition window here and uh, my character is set at Helvetica regular. I'm going to go ahead and just increase the size of this a bit. I think I'm going to also make it uh, bold uh, and maybe not so big. That'll be good enough to work with there so we can see it move. And now we have a nice B which we can animate. So here it is on our timeline and notice that the the layer here automatically took the name of B because it's a text layer so that automatically la gives the uh, the label here the same. Um, if I drop down I can see I've got uh, parameters under text I've got parameters under transform okay this shows that uh, the current position where it's sitting now um, and it's a hundred percent scale and it's a hundred percent opaque and if I want to see if there's anything animated on here, I'll just deselect here. Now I select that layer again. I hit the letter U, U, and nothing's happening because there is no animation assigned to this so far. So let's go ahead and do a simple animation here where we take the B from uh, this point and then uh, we'll move it over to the right side. Okay, so um, looking at our timeline is based in frames so we're doing about 24 frames per second so if we go over here to 24 frames actually I'm not sure about that setting so I'm gonna check my composition settings by coming up to composition composition settings and sure enough my frame rate is 24 so 24 frames per second so that tells me that if I go out 24 frames that'll take a second to get there uh, that's important as as we go along when we start to really see how easy it works and and that the the uh, way we use interpolation which we'll be explaining more but for those of you flash people that's the same thing as tweening so it's the it's the change from point, uh, keyframe to keyframe you know what happens in between okay so back to the B here I'm gonna go ahead and go to the home and click on the home button or come all the way over here to the home and I wanna see my position so I'm gonna hit the letter P that gives me the position attribute and I click the stopwatch and that gives us our first keyframe this is stuff that we saw in the previous video. Anyway, I'm going to scrub out to uh, 
24 frames with my current time indicator and I'm gonna make another keyframe and I'll go ahead and just move this thing so I'm gonna hold that I'm gonna click it once hold down the shift key to keep constraint proportions here I mean not constraint proportions but just keep it on this uh, very straight so it's not gonna go anywhere as far as up and down it's only gonna move along the x-axis so you can see that it moved along the x-axis okay and there's our keyframe now something to know when we look up here we know that these are these are linear keyframes and if you look up here you can see that the dots that are going in between these two frames are pretty you know evenly spread which means that if we scrub this and I'm gonna reduce the size zoom down here a little bit so I can actually see the whole thing to scrub here so when I scrub this this means that the B is traveling from point A to point B and it's doing it uh, in a very steady speed, a constant speed. Let's take a look at how we might copy and paste these keyframes and use them on another layer. Okay, so we'll make another layer. I'm um, gonna just go ahead and type another layer, an R, and put it kind of where uh, where the B was starting, but uh, down below maybe. Okay, okay, as if I were gonna spell my name out and then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, change the positions here of the layers and uh, you can see that I've got my B frame which has the animation with the steady anim constant animation here we got my R and there's nothing there so uh, here if we take these guys so I'm gonna actually copy these keyframes for the position the way that, that I can do that is I can actually um, uh, just click and drag a marquee, this is my favorite way, just select both of those keyframes and then I'll do an edit copy or a command C or control C and then come over to uh, this layer, select it and I'm gonna go ahead and paste those on uh, so if I do command V and uh, let's look at what we got when we scrub, well that's not exactly what we wanted, right? Let's see what the uh, parameters are here. So I'm going to, under the uh, R layer, I'm going to hit the letter U, which shows me, okay, it was the position. Sure enough, it looks like uh, these were attached. But the problem is, is that the position has X and Y information. So it basically put the R exactly where the B is, and it's really kind of hard to tell because those letters are kind of similar. So what we're going to do is undo that last move and... Uh, so now we have it back to where it was, the R is back to where it was. Uh, over here under the B, under the position layer, uh, notice that's another way to select everything. I just select the position layer and then both those keyframes are selected. But what I'm going to do is uh, just going to go ahead and control click on that and or right click and you can do a separate dimensions, separate dimensions. So I do that and now we can see the X and the Y are broken out here. So now with the X and the Y being broken out, then uh, I'll can, we can copy these keyframes and then put them down in the uh, position uh, area here. Now notice these guys actually changed as well here. Um, but if we want to kind of see really what's going on here before we copy it, um, actually we'll go ahead and just copy just the, uh, the uh, X coordinates, I mean sorry, the X keyframes, just so we can see this copy and paste work. So if I copy this, I'm using the keyboard shortcut command C, selecting this area, command V, and now when we scrub, you can see that the identical keyframes were attached to the R when it's in regard to the X positioning. There we go, and if we wanted to, um, I'm gonna undo that for a second. If I paste just down the timeline, so I move the playhead here, and now I command V, what we've got is staggering now because it always places it where the current time indicator is. So now the B starts and then the R follows. So now we have an interesting little effect there. Okay. Now let's um, go ahead and get rid of our R. Okay, let's also go ahead and just get rid of the layer B and start over again. And so I'm going to go again up to my text tool, click on the composition layer, put in a letter B, a keyframe at the beginning, and then a keyframe at the 24th frame. Then we're going to go ahead and move it. There we go. We've got it working now. And um, it's for 24 seconds. So um, 
This is, let me just change how we're viewing this. There we go. This is just the two keyframes. Ah, there's another keyframe out there. I'll get rid of that. The starting keyframe and the ending keyframe, and then it just sits there. So um, if we, the other types of keyframes that there are, are these. If we right click on a keyframe, and then we choose the uh, keyframe assistant ease in, you'll see that that changes to an easing key, which would slow it down. The thing to notice is, look up here, you'll see that the uh, dots are farther apart here to the left, and then they are uh, tighter here. So when we watch this animation, you see that it goes fast at first and then slows down, so it eases in. So what's, what's happening is that in this area that has the larger distances between the dots, the B is moving faster. And then once we get over here, it is, uh, slowing, it is slowing down because we have more dots there. So we could uh, ease this in, in. We can also work with the very first keyframe. Um, we can also do a toggle here, a toggle type of keyframe. So if we control click on it, toggle whole keyframe, what it, that do, it does is it holds the uh, position, everything, any kind of parameters that were changed here are held the entire time until it gets to the next keyframe and you can see that it then uh, pops out over there. Okay, so I'm going to undo here twice and I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is add a, a couple of keyframes in the middle of these two. So if I add a keyframe here just simply by moving the B a little bit down and add a keyframe over here by moving the B a little bit down and uh, now we have these four keyframes and you can see how they're kind of sp spread out here. But if we select all of these keyframes and control click on it, we can do a rove across time. So with rove across time, we've got uh, this keyframe, the di diamond keyframe on the, the front there, diamond on the, on the back, and then any keyframes in the middle are uh, little dots. And what happens is, is that when we move this keyframe now, you see this? these dots stretch out so it just sort of slows down that animation keeps it going keeps everything consistent all the way through okay um, gonna go ahead and get rid of these two inner ones so we're back to where we were and I'm gonna move the uh, keyframe back to about the 25th 24th keyframe there we go so it's about a second so we can kinda get an idea okay so that's about a second animation now let's take a look at in the uh, graph editor. All right, here we are in the graph editor, and um, so we've got the animation. And if we sc scrub here, we can see it again. Um, and with the position down, I, I just hit P here to show position. Then I'm going to be able to see uh, all of the uh, effects here with this selected. When I click on position, now I can see the graph of the position, which we know includes the x and the y. Um, but if I just kind of move my cursor over here, it says B. Uh, position, so that's its position change, 1457.35 pixels per second. So um, I'm going to come up to the view and then show rulers. Well, I can see this This is laid out at 1900 pixels here, so it makes sense that that is, you know, about uh, almost five, 1500 pixels that it's going across, and it's taking one second, so that's our speed. Now let's go ahead and uh, break apart the position again. Um, by control and then uh, what we're going to do is separate the dimensions. Okay, now here when we select the T level I don't see anything. When I select position X I see a graph for position X. Here I see position Y. So we're able to see them separately or we can see them together uh, if I select both of them. Okay, so here we can see that the the X is this one that's red, and the Y is the one that's green. And the Y is 457 uh, pixels uh, steady speed. And uh, let's just take a look at the X. And the X is going from uh, two, like the 200 pixel area here all the way up to see this is 1700 pixels. This is when it gets to, you know, the this area of 1600 pixels here and then this is the time that it takes so what we have when we see this traveling uh, pixels 
and then this is to the right over time, and with a diagonal, we have a constant speed, which is why we see those dots laid out like that. So uh, let's, let's, we don't actually need to look at the Y since really the Y doesn't change. It doesn't go up or down at all. So let's get rid of those keyframes and toggle back to our keyframes by turning off the graph editor. And let's just get rid of the Y pick, uh, keyframes. So we've deleted those. And now we can focus just on the X. Here's a quick look at the uh, graph editor again. And remember, this is a linear. So from point A to point B, so from the 200 pixel point to the 1600 over here, that's how long it takes. Again, the left side is the pixel that it's on, and the right side is time. I'm sorry, not the right side, but the top is time. So let's take a look at what we can change as far as there's different types of interpolation or how this point to this point is figured out. So uh, we switch back, turn toggle off the graph editor. We can look at our keyframes. And um, if you're ever wondering what type of keyframe you've got there, if you just right click on it and go to keyframe interpolation, then you can see what type it is, whether it's a linear, a bezier, continuous bezier, uh, auto bezier, or a whole one of the holds. Um, and often it's a good idea just to turn it back to linear again so that we can just change this as we go. Uh, there's two types, temporal interpolation, which is changes that happen over time, and, and spatial interp interpolations are things that change uh, as far as shape and space. So we're going to go ahead and just uh, cancel out of this. But if we wanted to make this a little bit more realistic and add some easing to this or, or uh, improve our animation, and when I control click keyframe assistant, let's do an easy ease out. So that means that uh, it should leave slower and sort of speed up. Okay, there's the little changed icon. Let's go to the graph. Okay, and there we go. We've got it slowing down and then speeding up here. Slowing down and then speeding up. Let's keep going. Let's go back to it. Let's change the ending keyframe as well. So I'm going to control click on that keyframe assistant. Let's change this one to easy ease in. Okay, so now I've got it easy easing in. So now we can really start to see it over here in the timeline. I'm sorry, in the composition panel. See how the dots are closer here on the corners but then further apart here? Right? So we've got it basically going slower, speeding up, and then slowing down. So if we look at the graph editor, we should see sort of an S formation. And here it is. Here it is. Slowing down in the middle, it's, it's definitely cutting the distance here speeding up and then once it gets up here it's slowing down again it's going straight right that's just staying stationary right on the thing same thing so that's what we've got going on here let's even uh, adjust this a little bit more now watch as I start to tweak this see how up up there we've got a changing of the way we're viewing this and I'm gonna change this down even have it maybe go into the negatives so now let's see what our arcs doing now our arc is going almost into negative space, then it's going back to zero, then it's shooting up, and then it's sort of slowing down. So let's watch that. And uh, what's happening is there is it's actually going backwards and then zipping over there. So it actually is going in reverse and then zipping and slowing down. So this is how you can work with easing.